what is the final result that when these, these students walk into your classrooms, you have them for a short amount of time. You, you never know. Like, it seems like the situations in each family is very volatile. It could be, you know, they're there yeah, for an extended period of time or they're there for a month or, you know, a week and who knows what happens. Yeah. What is the end result that you would like to see when every student leaves the experience at Kotal? I want every student to have a completely clear idea of their culture and an international school culture and I want them to be well-rounded. So I want them to have an entire skill set that they can walk out with and use so that they can continue learning. You know, at the end of the day, that's the bottom line is that we are not just your average academic school learning, you know, your maths and your English. These kids are learning skills to learn and to survive in the world and to understand things that they wouldn't learn unless you told them about it. You know, they're not going to get those opportunities to get on planes and go fly around and check out the world. They're not. You know, I've got little children from tiny villages talking about Paris or talking about these places they'll probably never go or see. But the fact is their eyes are open. You know, their minds are open and suddenly everything's a possibility. Anything's a possibility. You can play a game and you can, you, can, you can turn a bunch of seats into like a train and you can say, where do you want to go? To a bunch of Burmese kids that have never left the island and they'll say, oh, we'll go to London. Let's go to London and we'll see the bridge. You know, they can Google. You know, it's a skill. They can Google. And I know that that would maybe be like a controversial skill in some countries for young children, but it's so important for these children to get as many of these skills down as possible so that they're able to self-teach, basically. As these kids grow up, a lot of them believing that they're below, you know, a certain line of people, you know, that they're not as good as you know, and it was extremely difficult to get the, the Thai and the Burmese to mix. You know, it was a really difficult thing because in culturally Burmese are below the, the Thai culture. You know, they're not as educated and they're not as, they have all their things. But at the right. end of the day, it was really hard to get them to, you know, see. And you know what the really defining moment was when we had Ideu, who was, like the most one of our, our first Burmese children and she's the love of my life I adore her she was playing in the garden and a bunch of Thai moms were watching her and they were very impressed and they said is she Thai I said no she's Burmese no she's Thai no she's Burmese wow she's Thai no she's Burmese you know and now you see there's this change slowly occurring now where they're like accepting it they're like Oh, I, I mean, I don't want my kids to miss out. Look how well the Burmese kids are doing, yeah. you know. And suddenly they're all on the same level. You don't feel anything at school that there's anything different about the children, that anyone comes from anywhere better or worse. Wow. That is, that is so cool to hear that that kind of an impact is taking place. It seems like the school is so much more in, in, in the vision of what it could be. What people I don't realise is that Eliza and I have this vision of perfecting this blueprint and just being able to replicate it, you know, yeah. everywhere. Yeah, there's a big picture here, you know, and um, that's why the build is, is also so important because it will finalise a project for us.